Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me today for another near-death experience interview. Today with Anastasia Wesselink Mollering. I have been wanting to get Anastasia on for a couple of months since I first saw her interview with Jeff Mara, which by the way, check it out because that's an amazing interview too. But she is so good at putting indescribable things into words. And she has a slightly different perspective. She brings a different awareness to all the questions that we have surrounding near-death experiences, such as who are we and what are we doing here and what is out there waiting for us. As usual, today will be part one of our interview where Anastasia will share her experience and I'll ask her a couple of questions, but tomorrow we'll really dive into a Q&A. Here's a little bit of background on Anastasia. In December of 2019, she was having an invasive dental procedure when she left her body, left this world, and crossed over into what she calls the void. During her near-death experience, her soul connected to an indescribable bliss and infinite all-knowing oneness where she gained the understanding of who we really are, why we are having a physical experience, and came back with a clear message that there is no getting this life right or wrong. It took over a year for Anastasia to fully process her near-death experience before she could begin talking about it. After joining IANS for support, she is now telling her story publicly, sharing her profound insights through short videos on her TikTok page, and is working directly with people as a Reiki master teacher, soul coach, and intuitive artist. Her near-death experience story has a profound message of healing for those who are working through religious deconstruction, healing from traumatic life events, and those that are still struggling to find their life's purpose. Her hope is that her experience will help others to unlock their unlimited potential here in the physical to create a life of peace, love, and joy. All of Anastasia's links will be in the description, her TikTok, and her website. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hello, Anastasia. Thank you so much for being with me today. I'm so honored to meet you in person, in person and hear about your near-death experience and the wisdom that you brought back from that. So thank you for joining me. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Of course. Would you like to start by just sharing your near-death experience story with us? Yeah, absolutely. So in December of 2019, I had an invasive dental procedure done and it had required me to be sedated and have medication that I've never had before. And the dentist started to preparations, put a mask over my face, and I started taking in uh, like nitrous oxide. And as the dentist then went on to prepare some of the other things in the, in the room, I kept getting this really strange feeling, this sensation starting to come over me. And it was like, it was like I was lifting up out of my body when I was breathing, and then I would fall back down again. And then I would lift up and I'd fall back down again. And as this continued, it, it wasn't subsiding and I was getting a little bit concerned and having never done this before, I didn't know if it was normal or if it was something that I should raise to the dentist. So I just kept quiet because I didn't want to disturb the dentist. And as it started to continue, it got to a point to where I really felt like I was coming way out of my body and I came back down and I thought, okay, that's it. I probably need to say something. And in the next breath, I'm no longer in the dental chair, but I'm now up in the ceiling, looking down at myself in the chair. And now this is such a hard, it's so hard for me to explain everything from this point on, because what I experienced was outside of time, there was really no feeling or sensation of time like we experience here where one thing after another happens. It's more like everything all happens simultaneously and I can just try to explain it like one thing happened after another, but it really felt like it all happened at one time. And so I'm looking down at my body and I'm thinking, uh, what am I doing up here? And in that moment, I realized something so, it was so profound. It was like a flash of an epiphany. And I thought, I just said, what am I doing up here? 
I didn't say, what am I doing down there where my body is? I said, what am I doing up here with whatever it was that I was at that time in the ceiling, that part of me that was then looking down at my physical body. And I went, oh my gosh, we, we are not our bodies. And then my very next thought was, uh, am I dead? (laughs) And just like that, I flipped over and I am now like inches away from the ceiling. And this is so interesting because if you remember being a little kid and seeing something for the first time, and I'm not talking about like something really ordinary. I'm talking about like, you know, an eclipse or something that you've never seen before that just takes your breath away. I was looking at all these little details in the ceiling and I found them absolutely beautiful and miraculous. And I remember like the little particles of dust and the little cracks and just thinking that is the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. And just like that, it was like I blinked or a lens came down over my face and I was gone. I was out of the room. Now, at this point, I opened my eyes and what seemed like a flash, like it was really almost like a blink. And I am in absolute, it's a void. It's like, it's nothing, but it's everything. And this feeling that I have is I am in complete and total oneness. And in this place, This is where it gets really, really hard to try to describe each piece because it all blended together um, as one. But I had this feeling that wherever I was, one, I didn't wonder where I was. I didn't worry about where I was. I didn't even really have much recollection about the physical body that I just came from. I had a sense of self. I, I knew who I was, that I had an individual sense of self. I remember that. But I remember so clearly that I was a part of this, what I call a oneness in this void. Now I call it a void, but the better way to describe it is like, it's a void of anything that isn't complete. It felt like everything in this place was absolutely complete. Everything that was to ever be known all existed there, every soul, Uh, every soul experience, every soul was absolutely a part of this. And any experience that any of us have ever had through any soul experience was all accessible there. And it was a place of absolute knowing. And just like the time didn't exist when I was back in the room, but hovering over my body, time didn't exist here at all either. But it felt like I've tried so hard to find the words to describe some of these pieces because we just don't have a vocabulary for something like this. We don't, we don't live our day-to-day lives feeling at one with everything. We don't walk past our mailbox and feel like we're one with the mailbox. It's just not the way we live our lives. So we don't have a real vocabulary to describe these kinds of experiences. But it was as if I was one with everything And that there had never been anything but being one with everything. And because of that, it felt like, and it it gave me this sensation that I could look through the eyes of every single soul that had ever existed through all time and through any experience ever. And that all I had to do was just shift my awareness to something and I would be able to know it. Now, as I was picking up this like sensation that I was connecting to something so big, I wanted to know everything. I remember wanting to to know this and wanting to know that because there was still this part of me that had my individuality. And then there was this part of me that was connected to this oneness, to this everything. And I couldn't ask a question. No matter what I would try to do, I couldn't form a question. All I could do was be curious about it. And it feels to me that when I reflect back on that, 
the reason I couldn't form a question is because there everything was already known. It would have been impossible for there to have been a question because if there was a question that would mean that something's not answered and in this place, everything was answered. Everything was already known, every outcome already complete. And as I was taking this in, I felt myself expanding, if you will, as I was taking in all of this knowing. And it felt like it was gaining like an acceleration or a momentum, and it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden, it stopped and I was back in the dental chair again. And at this point, it was like I kind of felt like I had a foot in two worlds. It felt like I was still back in the void. And it felt like I was in the dental chair. And the dentist was there and he he had his hand on me. He's like, are you okay? And I remember hearing his words. I remember knowing what he was saying. And I remember responding with like, yeah, I'm okay. But my interest was not in the dentist at all. Where before this whole thing started, I was so concerned about what was happening with me when I was starting to float above my body. That was gone, that concern out the window. At this point, all I wanted to do was hold on to that connection that I had because it seemed like it was like an aperture. And as it was going, as time was going, when I came back, it was closing down. And all of that knowing, all of that access to everything was slipping away. And it felt like it was just slipping through my fingers and I was grasping and I wanted to hold on to absolutely everything I could possibly hold on to. But there was nothing I could do. The, the connection was closing, but I brought back of all the things that I brought back, I wish I would have brought back all of the knowing, but I brought back some really specific things. And I feel like I still have somewhat of a foot in that place still, like the door is like cracked open. It hasn't completely closed, but I don't have that intimate connection that I had when I was there, when I was in the dental chair. And when I came back, I immediately thought, okay, we are not our body. That, that is so obvious. We are so much more than our body. And I use the word soul because I don't have a better word. There may be a better word that really represents the part of us that is more than our physical body, but without having a better word, I'll use the word soul, that we are a soul in a physical body and that our physical bodies are nothing more than like a sensory tool for us to collect sensory information about the physical experience and that it gets shared at the soul level because the soul ultimately wants to have a direct physical experience and to be able to create here in a physical life. The soul is absolutely complete. That part of me that went into this void, that went into this oneness was absolutely complete. And that's been something that without a doubt was so clear to me, but it was also clear to me that with that completeness, it also meant in that place that I was at, there was no good or bad. There is no right or wrong. And there are no lessons to learn in the physical life in a way that translates to the type of experience or a judgment that you may have on the other side. Now, how you live your life here in the physical world absolutely is going to have a good or a bad sensation for you, depending on your experience. If you experience something traumatic, it's not going to feel good. If you experience something blissful, it's going to feel great. But those actions, as they translate to the other side, did not translate in my experience into anything that meant that you would be judged. And that judge was judgment is not like a sorting tool. It's not like the Harry Potter sorting hat, right? You're not going to go into this place or this place, depending on your actions. It was really about you reconnecting to this part of you that you've always been connected to, but you didn't have the ability to bring it into your physical body for whatever reason. And so when you connect to that oneness on the other side, you have the ability to create these experiences that you want to have in the afterlife. 
the part of me that saw all these different experiences when I was in the void, all the different souls, all the different experiences, all the different lifetimes, it was as if you were to take all 7 billion of us here on this planet right now and take a piece of thread, wrap it around the globe, maybe about 100,000 times, take that thread, stretch it out straight, so it would be, what, hundreds of thousands of miles long. Then take one little itty bitty fiber off of that thread. Put all 7 billion people of, a, of us here right now on that thread. And that would be the equivalent of how long your experience here in this lifetime would be in comparison to your entire soul experience. So that even doesn't come close to comparing it because it is so, so, so big. It's beyond our comprehension. The connection of oneness, of, of bliss, of peacefulness in this place is unlike anything I have ever experienced in this physical life. But I understood that it's not that we're trying to get through this physical experience to get to the other side after we pass. It's not like we're trying to check boxes here to get into an afterlife that we ultimately wanna have forever and ever and ever. It felt very much like we are learning to bring that bliss that's a part of us at the soul level into our physical experiences. And that little bit of a doorway that I have open, I feel that just like a little, like a little flashlight, if you will, connection. And it reminds me when I really put my awareness to that connection, just how much creative, amazing creative power and potential we have when we feel that deeper part of ourselves within our physical body. And so I have, um, I have spent the last, I guess, almost two years now, um, really trying to piece this together, trying to find the words to explain it, because no matter how many times I add new adjectives or adverbs to it, it still just doesn't even come close. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I, I know it's so hard to put it into words, but I think you've done a fantastic job just, just the way that you describe things is you, you bring a new awareness to it that I've never heard from anybody else's story. So thank you for that. I try. I try as yeah. much as I can. Every once in a while, I'll be, you know, driving or doing something that is, you know, kind of mindless. And it seems like in those moments, that's where I'll have like a, oh, I could use this to describe this part of my experience, or I could use this comparison, but overall, no matter how many different ways I've tried to slice it, there's something so much bigger outside of this physical experience. And I'm sure where I went was, you know, maybe even scratching the surface. So you talked about the void and how it, it's a void. Everyone describes it as the void, but yet at the same time, you said, I believe you correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you said it's the absence. It felt like it was the absence of anything not complete. Okay. So the only yes. thing that existed there was completeness, but it was completeness that hadn't formed into anything yet. That's just was what I was going to ask. I was going to say, do you think it's like the potential for everything that has ever existed? That's kind of the way I, I've landed on it for now. I mean, over time, I think as I process things, I might find a better way to describe it, but it does. It seems like it is maybe the well of all of our creative potential and all of our, you know, that part of us that isn't our physical body that does exist there. It could be the place where we all come together and we have that connection to everything. Mm. Um, it is, you know, it is, um, a little bit challenging because when people describe a void, and I've heard many NDE stories now where people have gone to the void because 
believe it or not, I've become a voracious consumer of NDE stories. (laughs) Um, And it seems to me that for the most part, 90% or so of the people that I've listened to or that I've talked to personally about the void, we've all had the same experience of it being something beautiful, of something comforting, like being in a womb where you're just wrapped in something so pleasant but yet you have complete awareness of it. And you feel as if you're in a place where anything is possible, but anything in a place of where you want to, to know more, you want to understand more, you want to, you want to be a part of it more, not where you're feeling, at least for me, I didn't feel scared at all. There was not even an inkling of being scared. It was more like, I want to get out my lawn chair, lay down, get my umbrella drink and stay there forever. Yes. (laughs) Yes. I can relate to that. So along those same lines with the void, um, containing like the potential of everything that has ever existed or ever will exist, And then contrasting that with the physical experience, because what I like about your message is that you're saying this physical experience matters. And a a lot of spiritual paths, it seems the goal is to sort of maybe over spiritualize things sometimes and lift us out of this physical experience. But it seems like maybe there's supposed to be more of a balance, like between the void where we are in that state of oneness and connected to everything. And then the manifestation of that into the physical or whatever else there is where we're having an individual experience. What do you think about the balance between those two? Yeah, I think that we are connected the strongest from our physical body to that soul part of us through our feeling. Okay. And I talk about it um, a very specifically in terms of what I mean by feelings. So feelings are, what I mean by feelings are the part of us that is that constant state of an experience. So you may have this um, experience of, of love, of unconditional love, of a wave of peacefulness. Those are feelings. Those are the experience of being in the physical body versus emotions where emotions are often reactive. It's where we are responding to something that has happened in our life or has happened, uh, or we're responding in anticipation of something that's going to happen. And it creates an emotional reaction, which is, you know, chemical and mental in nature, but that is not the feeling part of us. The part of us that would actually be objective and observe those emotions, that would be closer to the feeling part that I'm talking about. It seems to me that of all the things from my observations of a physical life that we tend to resist the most as humans is getting into a place of feeling. It tends to be the scariest thing for many people to do. And that is the place where we have the strongest connection to that soul part of us that is part of that infinite potential, that creative energy, that any word, God, source, love, they all fit. All those words will fit into this experience. And when we connect to that and we bring that more purposefully into our lives on a day-to-day basis, then we are bringing in more of that. It's cliche, but I think it's one everybody can relate to. It's that experience of heaven on earth. It is bringing that part of us that is complete, that is healed, that is unconditional love, that has all the connection to understanding where we want to go and what we want to do in this physical life, what we want to experience, that all resides in our soul, but we have to open up from a physical standpoint to get to it. So I think when you talk about the balance, it's pretty accurate. The paradox is to get to that connection we often have to let go of a lot of the physical things in some ways 
to allow that door to open in order for us to get access to the feelings. We have to get rid of our, you know, kind of our thought processes where we're projecting ourselves into the future or we're really worried about the past. Uh, we have to allow and, and let things unfold with a sense of faith and trust. And that can be really challenging because I can imagine 100% of us have all experienced some level of pain and heartache and trauma that acts as a kind of a, a big chain lock over the door that would let us get to that place where we can really feel. And so, yes, it's a balance. We want to bring more of that into the physical, but the paradox is, is we have to let go of some of the things that we've built up as our defenses in order to get there. And there are a lot of tools, a lot of spiritual or, or, um, tools where people maybe that are in um, like religious cultures that used to have a sense of something bigger than themselves. Those are all really great ways to kind of get out of our own way, if you will, uh, because what, what we need to do is really be able to acknowledge that connection in order to bring it more purposefully into our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. 